it's a, um, I don't know, it's one of those clubs that's just on the word, you know, it's a go-to place, it's legendary. What are these like institutions that you like, you, you just trust? And there's no real barrier between like the crowd and, and uh, us. Well, we are so thankful that we get these opportunities to come here. And it doesn't matter where you're from, what background you're from. And we were like, fuck. <laughs> we had to open. Everything was invested in this lineup. Literally one of my favorite clubs in the world, so. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> My name is Rick. I run Place Productions as a young videographer. I moved to Denmark in the summer of 2019 to study at Copenhagen Business School and to further develop clicks. Originating from the Netherlands, where the techno scene is like 10 times the size of the scene in Denmark, I have established a fine taste of what techno music is and how it brings extremely diverse people together under one umbrella. Once arrived in Denmark, I couldn't wait to start creating. I emailed like 40 clubs that I would love to shoot for it, and one of the first replies came from Culturebox. A few months later, I'm doing a voiceover for a short documentary I shot for them. I hope you like it. So, Culturebox. It opened its doors in 2005. After a lot of difficult and stormy years, Culturebox is now doing better than ever. They have won a list of awards for the quality of their club nights, atmosphere, sound delivery, etc. Not only is it the best known techno club of the country, it is safe to say that it roams in the top of electronic venues in the Nordic region. Being Copenhagen based, Culturebox pulls in artists from all over the globe, from which many of them praise the venue for a multitude of reasons. I decided to hit a few of them up to see if they would be open for an interview. I also rang up some people of the organization to talk to me. My name is Logan Bush. I'm the founder and the CEO of Culturebox. So this is Loke. Loke came up with the concept for Culturebox when he was living in Italy. There was no uh, no clubs in Copenhagen presenting uh, electronic music. Yeah, we decided to to find a place. We thought this this could actually work out, even though that not that many people was going out and listening to electronic music 15 years ago. From the conversation I had with Loke, it became clear to me how much of a risk it was to open a club for music that virtually nobody was listening to back then. It's no wonder that Culturebox had such a difficult time in its infant stages. And then we were thinking, fuck, how to get the money? <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we were broke, both of us. We didn't have any money. But of course, uh, we have friends and family, and we're really lucky that uh, friends and family believed in us. And, uh, wanted to lend us some money for uh, opening the club. Told by the fire inspector that you cannot open. And we were like, fuck. <laughs> we had to open. Everything was invested in this lineup and uh, everybody was invited. I was just working uh, day and night, like 24 hour shifts for a whole week and just managed to open the club. I mean, yeah. I was surprised about how willing the artists were to talk to me as soon as I mentioned that I was documenting for Culturebox. It has the advantage of age, so a lot of DJs have been performing here before, or have even been going out here in earlier days. My name is Dubfire, and I'm here in beautiful Copenhagen. Ali Shirozinia, better known as Dubfire, is a major player in the current techno scene, and was more than willing to talk to me. Uh, yeah, I can't remember exactly what year it was that I played Culturebox, but, um, you know, a lot of us DJs who are doing like 100, 20, 30 plus shows a year, these days tend to be playing more festivals and uh, whenever we have the opportunity to play like an intimate uh, nightclub um, where, you know, we're able to really feel the, the dance floor um, and, and there's no real barrier between like the crowd and, and us and we're able to like play a more intimate set, something a bit deeper. It's something that I look forward to and whenever I have a connection with the 
particular club that makes me feel very comfortable in the DJ booth. I mean, every club is different. Um, every you know country that I play at, like people respond to the music in a different way. Uh, I can't really say how Danish people respond to the music. So it's it's like a, a really eclectic uh, mix of really super creative people. I really feel the creative spark and the creative energy. Every corner of the city, there's just always something interesting happening. It's, it's a place that I very much look forward to. At some point during our talk, Logi starts telling me about a flood they had once. This disaster later turned into one of Culturebox's biggest advantages that may even have been the factor that Culturebox is so successful today. We had a flooding. We had a gigantic flooding down the basement here with a half meters of water. And that was actually the, the major step to get Redbox built. I thought it was time to move around and uh, and built the red box. Yeah, now we had two really floors so we could have open at the same time. Having two rooms created the opportunity for small local artists to play for an audience. On the other end of the table, visitors could now enjoy multiple styles of electronic music under one roof. Pukavi is a group that took perfect advantage of this. Who do I have here? You have the four beautiful people of Pukavi. Pukavi. Pukavi is a group of young, talented DJs that host club nights at Culturebox and who are trying to grow in their concept. Do you know what Pukavi means? I have no clue. It's okay. probably Spanish or Italian or something. Very close. It's actually Latin. It's Latin for you have sinned. When you are out clubbing, you feel like sometimes that you have sinned a little bit. That's why we, we made Pukavi, because we want to make sure that all of those guys that want to go out and listen to really great music have a place to Sin a little bit without doing it. That's okay. The biggest sin is not to come to our party, so. Exactly. <laughs> well, we are so thankful that we can get these opportunities to come here. Uh, yeah, the organizers and the owners of the club have a lot, have a lot of faith in our concept. Which, uh, yeah, we appreciate a lot. By the way. Yeah. I, this is your debut? Yes. Played, played three times downstairs and, and now it's time to move upstairs. Gasper, how do you feel? How do you feel about that? Uh, a bit nervous. <laughs> nervous? Yeah. But I actually have been nervous for a whole week. When I started Project Box, it was not just about having an iClub. I wanted to do something for for uh, for the up and comings. Uh, I wanted to to have you know like like making some kind of lessons for them and how how to become a DJ, how to become a producer. Culturebox is also known for its workshops in which it gives young artists the opportunity to learn and to spin on professional systems. I interviewed a few artists who were newcomers to Culturebox to see how they got affiliated with the club. My name is Lucas, uh, I'm 28 years old. Um, I'm playing under the alias uh, Prince of Wales. The first time I was here was more than five years ago, I think. I was in uh, on exchange in Sweden and I was going out here a lot, so it was the first uh, electronic music club I visited in Denmark. What's the night gonna bring? Um, What's it gonna look like? A long night, a lot of records, hopefully no technical issues. I hope that there's uh, everything's running smooth and people have a lot of fun and it will be pretty much packed, I guess. So that's great. <laughs> Hi, my name is Roscoe. Roscoe. Roscoe is a resident DJ at Fuse London and is about to set up his own record label called Late Night Skanking. About 10 years ago, when I first ever, ever started DJing, uh, one of my friend's older brothers told me, write a wish list of all the favorite clubs you want to come to play. And on that list was Fabric, Rex Club, Robert Johnson, and Culture Box. And I got the email from, from my booking agent and, uh, a few months ago, and it's been one of those one on, on the calendar where I've been really looking forward to playing. Okay, cool, so this is the place that is. And it just looks like one of them dark, sweaty clubs, no frills. It's all about the music and what I say, heads down, hands up vibes. So yeah, I can't wait, man. I'm sure I'm going to deliver and I hope to be back. I'm Benjamin Damage. I'm here playing Culture Bots for the first time. First time? So you've never been here before? I've uh, never been to this club before. I've heard lots of, um, lots of good things about it. The music policy is really good. Always get the right mix of people. It's really nice. Um, place to come and people feel feel safe there and you know it's a good place to dance.
I've talked to a lot of artists and visitors about why they came to Culture Box, some of them on a very regular basis. 9 out of 10 told me that they felt at home. A feeling of home in a nightclub was quite exceptional, so I asked Loke if this was part of the business plan when he first started up. Absolutely. It was my super intent. That was my goal to make this as not my, not only my second home, but everybody coming here's second home. Uh, this is the fourth time I'm playing here at Culture Box in Copenhagen. And a musical vision attempting to encapsulate the power and beauty of the cosmos of full techno regalia. Meanwhile, underneath his musical guard pulse is a heart that yearns towards a greater understanding of the cosmos and our own place within it, unapologetically creating a space within the genre reserved for music that is not only danceable, but thematically inclined toward a higher consciousness. This is Cosmic Techno. This is Pleasure Craft. Literally one of my favorite clubs in the world, so... Really? Yeah. Well, it's quite an intimate atmosphere. The sound is fantastic. It's only like 300 people and um, no tables, no bullshit. You know, it's just a dark room with great sound. Yeah, it's just the energy is visceral. You can feel it. And as yeah. a DJ, like that's the fuel, you know, that takes you to that next yeah, level. Yeah, so, that makes sense. And they're up for anything. So yeah, it's really awesome crowd. Awesome. Like, I'm like a pseudo resident now. So yeah. Right, yeah, I get it. Fourth time, I feel like, all right. Yeah, this is, this is one of my homes. I'm Sexy Laser. I recently moved to Copenhagen and I uh, figured out, oh, this is the real shit. This is the club. I enjoy uh, coming here, even if it's a uh, red box or black box. I don't care, it's just a pleasure to play here. Um, what I actually like about Culture Box is uh, it's uh, a really like underground venue. I'm really into like this underground dark venue. It's like a really techno club, should be. Yeah, it's always been a place that has been around for long uh, and uh, that have handled things very professionally. Do you feel at home at Culture Box? I feel this is my second home. I just love coming home and playing at Culture Box. Are you excited? Super excited, yeah. My name is uh, Per Hammer. Uh -huh. From over the bridge. Right on. Sweden. Been born and raised here. This one place to go to when you're from from over the bridge and you don't know where to go. It's like you always have the doors are always open. You know, it's like one of these like institutions that you like you you just trust that it's all always gonna be there. You know, this this city of Copenhagen have decided. I have these like pictures in my head that there's all these like politicians sitting there in their in their, in their suits. So, like there should be at least one club in Denmark. That's always uh, brings like nice quality dance music for for the people here. It's it's more like welcoming in a way. Like everybody's welcome there. It's it's and it's not in any way like uh, elitistic or something. You can come here. You can check the lineup. It's gonna be it's gonna be a smashing party. It's not like uh, that. You have to uh, know someone to get in or something. It's like open for everyone. So does it give you come. does it give you a vibe of being home? Yeah, it does. Hi, we, we actually we, we love Tim. So yeah. because we love Tim, we love Kutubas. Because all this is not free, it costs a lot of money uh, helping, um, and uh, I couldn't see that happen uh, before I got Tim in. Tim is one of my really good friends in Copenhagen. Since we started up together, me and Tim, everything has been exploding in here. We, we had now two really, really, really good years. The office staff is uh, expanding and expanding and expanding. It's also, I can see that he's uh, trying to make our wishes uh, coming true by like booking, booking the staff for DJ sets. Tim is uh, in charge of the, of the music. He's in charge of the promotion. I, yeah, I love him very much. Who is Tim? Tim is the guy who invited me in for a talk after reading my email. He is the man behind promotion, music, media, and more. Aside from that, he is co-owner of Culture Box, hosts his own club nights, and owns his own record label. He is often to be found behind the DJ booth. Tim Anderson. Could you introduce yourself real quick? Of course I can. I'm uh, Tim Anderson. I first got involved in Culture Box back in 2005. I was invited to play here together with my uh, friend Kulch. Uh, since end of 2016, I've been uh, co-owner here at Culture Box. Culture Box, first and foremost, is a music venue, an institution that uh, helps young people in uh, growing their careers. Always focus on the music first and the rest comes second, which is 
pretty unique uh, during the circumstances in the music industry these days where money is uh, always an issue. But um, we are actually a non-profit organization here. There are few underground clubs around. We're not in it for the money, we are in it for the music and uh, hopefully that shows. A feeling of belonging and understanding and just love for sort of everything and everything that is happening around you. This, this club is also kind of, it's, it's it promoted other things for me, like I've, in my time here I've also learned, to, learned how to play myself, uh, and it's just it's a really beautiful opportunity in that way. It's a warm welcome feeling they give me, yeah. We, we have a beautiful mix of people on the dance floor. I've been going to this place since I was 17, you know, even longer than you are now. Culture box. Crazy young. <laughs> okay. Uh, back to the fucking fake ID and yeah. It's, it's so much more than just like it's, it's this beautiful place. It's, it's, uh, it's a full, it's a, it is a culture like they say. As a student, I can assure you that I have visited multiple nightclubs in Copenhagen more than once. The reason for us to go to a club is no different than why we go to a grocery store or why we go for a run. It is satisfaction that we seek, that we always seek. And the beauty of a nightclub is that it is packed with satisfaction. The only issue we face is that we sometimes overestimate our need for satisfaction. As not everything can be bought in a grocery store to satisfy your needs, whereas running will not on itself lead to a healthier lifestyle, the same goes for a nightclub. On the flip side, an atmosphere of understanding, safety, like-mindedness and openness can create what has been created in Culture Box many years ago. A feeling of belonging. Perhaps to be yourself is the one need that is difficult to satisfy in a nightclub. But if you would be open for it, the culture box will happen. Pre setup. On that is a good old setup. That's a good photo, dude. On yeah, the bin. Yeah. That's ghetto. That's ghetto. That is from the slums, isn't it? Yeah, we're fucking ghetto. You get in there, Tony. You get, get in the back, like ghetto. Ghetto pimp in the back. Get up him. <laughs> Come on, take a photo of that. Take a photo of that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>